Hello! In this video, I would like to prove one of the most important theorems about the ideals in the ring f of x, where f is a field. Namely, that every ideal in the polynomial ring f of x is a principal ideal. That means that it is generated by a single polynomial, and the ideal consists of all multiples of that polynomial. This is a very valuable theorem for understanding the structure of the ideals of a polynomial ring over a field. Let's write down the proof. What I'm going to have to do, of course, is start with an arbitrary ideal. Let me call it capital I. Uh, however, I may as well make the assumption from the beginning that I is not the zero ideal. That's because the zero ideal is already principal, <laughs> consisting of all multiples of zero. And so we may as well start off with the assumption that i is not zero. But I am going to take this as an ideal in capital F of x. Let's start from that point right there. Now, in order to prove that this ideal is principal, what I'm going to do next is a very important step. I'm going to grab some polynomial in I that is not zero and that has the lowest possible degree of any elements in capital I. Let's call this very important polynomial G of X. Let G of X be a polynomial in I I'm going to write with a, I'm going to find a better marker here. Let G of X be a polynomial in capital I of lowest possible degree. Uh, and, and I should also add that we do not want to start off with zero. So we're just going to grab a non-zero polynomial of the lowest possible degree that's inside of i. And our claim, our claim is then going to be that i is in fact the same thing as the principal ideal generated by g of x. This will prove that our arbitrary ideal i is a principal ideal, which is what our theorem is asserting. To prove this claim, I have to prove subsets in both directions. Let's start with what is probably the easier direction to consider, which is that I'm going to show that, actually the easier direction is the other direction. I wrote that down backwards. I'm going to prove, hopefully, that everything in the principal ideal generated by g of x lives in i. This is actually clear because any multiple of g of x stays in i since i is closed under absorption. So since g of x is an element of i and i is closed under absorption, Any multiple of g of x, such as g of x times h of x, has to remain in i. This is for all h of x in the polynomial ring f of x. However, that's an arbitrary expression for something in the principal ideal generated by g of x. Namely, it's g of x times some polynomial. All of those results stand inside of i. And so that completes the proof of the backwards containment. Take a minute, write this down, ponder it, pause it if you need to, and then I'm going to erase this so I can work on the other part of the proof. Next, we have to prove the harder part of this argument is that anything in I 
lives inside of the principal ideal generated by g of x. I should point out, for starters, that if g of x is equal to a constant, in other words, if the you know, lowest possible degree of a polynomial in this ideal is actually degree zero, then actually the principal ideal generated by g of x would literally be the entire ring. And, and that's because, that's because if g of x is a constant and it's not zero, then it's a unit. It's a non-zero element of the base field capital F. Everything in F is a unit. So g would just be a unit, and as soon as you have a unit inside of an ideal, even if it's just the principal ideal that it generates, well, then that ideal is the entire ring. And if that ideal is the entire ring, then I can guarantee you that I is a subset of it. <laughs> okay? I'm trying to prove that I is a subset of this principal ideal, and of course I is inside of the entire ring, capital F of X. So if that was the case, if g of x was a constant, we would be done. So let's assume not. Let's assume now that the degree of g of x is, well, let's call it n, which is at least 1. It's not a constant polynomial at this point. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to pick an arbitrary element, f of x, from capital I. I'm going to take f of x and I'm actually going to divide it by g of x. And that will leave me with a quotient and a remainder. This is according to the division algorithm. So by the division algorithm, right, what we can do is we can write f of x as g of x times q of x plus r of x. So q is the quotient, r is the remainder. This would be for some r of x and q of x in capital F of x. And the other thing to keep in mind is that the degree of that remainder, the degree of r of x, has to be less than the degree of g of x. However, the interesting thing is, if we now write down, I'll come back up here again, if we write down what r of x is, if we solve for r of x in this very important equation right here, right, then what we will have, guys, is r of x is equal to f of x minus g of x times q of x. And remember here, guys, that f of x lives in capital I. I've got that right here. And so does g of x. g of x is also in capital I. And you're looking at an expression that consists of f of x and g of x with subtraction and, and absorption. Ideals are closed under subtraction and absorption, and so r of x lives in i. But wait a minute. g of x was supposed to be the smallest degree polynomial, non-zero, inside of i. And it now looks like I have r of x as a polynomial inside of i of lower degree. The only way to avoid a contradiction here is to conclude that r of x is therefore equal to zero. It's the only way out <laughs> of a contradiction. If r of x is not zero, then we've got a polynomial of lower degree than g of x inside of i. And so r of x is equal to zero. Let me just write down that this would be uh, by the minimality of the degree of g of x. Right. Well, if r of x is equal to 0, then take a look at what we have here. 
in that case, f of x is simply g of x times q of x, and there is no remainder. And now you're looking literally at something that is a multiple of g of x. This means that f of x is in the principal ideal generated by g of x, and that proves the rest of my claim. So, with that said, we have now finished the proof. Every ideal in capital F of X must be principal. We did use the fact that capital F was a field. Remember, if G of X was just a constant, then we needed to know that it was actually going to have to be a unit in order to claim that the principal ideal that it generated was the whole f of x, which certainly contained i, so that i was a subset of even a principal ideal generated by a constant. In other words, what I'm saying is this proof would not have worked if we didn't have a coefficient, of the, if the coefficients of the polynomial are not required to be from a field, capital F. That is actually an important assumption here. I hope that this Makes sense. I hope that you've enjoyed it. Feel free to pause, to reflect, to finish writing anything down about this. And I look forward to seeing you all again very soon in the next video. Thank you.